Hi, everybody. Doug Fullington, Audience Education Manager at Pacific Northwest Ballet, here today with three of our dancers to talk about Twilight Arts Waiting at the Station. I'm really happy to welcome Sarah Pash, Angelica Generosa, and Elle Macy. Thank you guys for taking time to talk today. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so all three of you uh, were in the premiere of Waiting at the Station when Twyla made it for the company in 2013. And I know there are a lot of memories and uh, a lot of great experiences working with Twyla. And that's what I want to talk about and reminisce about today. And first, I just want to ask each of you in few sentences just to describe Twyla Tharp. Should I go first, guys? Yeah, you go. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, well, Twyla is a large force packed into a very tiny person. <laughs> and, um, yeah, everything about her is energy and push. And um, yeah, there's just not anything that gets left behind with her. It's all or nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, that's what I have to say about Twyla. <laughs> yeah, I think the first time I saw Twyla, I mean, I think I had an idea of who she was. Um, Sarah and I have talked about, we saw moving out. And so I knew who this woman was. I knew the work she created. And then through watching P and B's, you know, repertoire, we've kind of seen some things, but working with her was entirely different. She was this tiny, tiny woman with this like spiky white hair and these big glasses and this oversized sweatshirt and like these tiny little <laughs> legs. And so you just like, she almost looks like a cartoon when she walks through the door and she's larger than life. And she asked just as much of us as she asked herself every day. And so it was just kind of, you knew that she was putting in the work. And so you wanted to try to match her with that energy. And I think at the time we were all really young and all really eager and we did everything she asked of us. and than some, you know, just more than I think we knew was possible of ourselves, which was very cool. Yeah, I totally agree with both of you guys. And like, she would definitely push us past our limits with things and um, surprises us in a way too, that we grew from the experience and um, also learned a lot about retrograding and reversing and doing both right and left. <laughs> so um, yeah, she's, like what both, both said, huge force to work with, and it's been really fun. Yeah, yeah I can even uh, agree with all those things too from working with Twyla up here in the office. She'd come in in the morning first thing, <laughs> uh, we've got work to do. And was <laughs> lots of preparation, always had a plan, and it was always about the work. There was not small talk. It was about the work, mm -hmm. no matter uh, what was going on or what time of day, beginning of the day or the end. She's all business. <laughs> yeah, very, very focused. Mm -hmm. So in the studio, I um, want to talk about what the process was like. And that could be either at the beginning of the process or even the beginning of the rehearsal day. Just kind of wondering how she worked with you in the studio. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like like we all said in our descriptions <laughs> of her. We got in the studio and there was no time wasted. It was. <laughs> right to it and you were working from the very top of the minute till the end and we were doing things over and over and over and over and over again and um like constantly building on whatever she started with and yeah it was there was no downtime it was like okay we're gonna do it again okay do it again okay <laughs> like there, and like Elle said earlier we're all just like young and eager and we just did it <laughs> I mean, yeah, what do you guys have to say about that? But also just remember, she would, she went with all of her energy and she would show something and then it was up to you to interpret what she was showing. Cause you know, she, she's yeah. older and she'd be like, okay, something like this. And then you were like, okay. And you know, we were trying to use both ballet vocabulary, which she wanted us to. And, but it was a little bit of freedom. It was more collaboration that way where yeah. I think if I was working with her now, I'd feel a little bit more confident with my own voice. But at the time I was kind of like, oh my gosh, what if I don't do it right? But I don't know that there was a right, you know, in the end. Exactly. I think it was what you imagined in your body was what she wanted to see. And then she could mold it. 
Yeah, so yeah. You're definitely feeding off of us. Off for of, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also with like, um, for the part that I had to do with partnering, um, we like at some time, like she would be like, Angelica, why won't you, actually she called me Angie, but Angie, why won't you kind of like lift me and like try to drag me across and Steven do the same. And it made me realize that, oh, this is what the guy has to do. So I have to kind of make it work for the woman as well. So um, that was interesting to partner Twyla. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So she, she would show, but then she would want you to take it from there and then she would watch what you did. And then she'd yeah. ask for different things and like, this will work or do mm -hmm. this here and yep. collaborative. Mm -hmm. yep. cool. Mm -hmm. cool. So waiting at the station, I mean, as we sort of found out as it went along, it ended up, there was a story, there's the father and he has the son and he's, um, getting on in life and he's being chased by three fates. Twyla calls them uh, formally, but we all called you the golden girls <laughs> in costumes. And uh, you were coming for him, right? There you are. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> so it was you, Sarah and Elle and Chelsea yeah, and Miles yeah. that were yeah. the three. Yeah, and, Chanel's. And so you were coming for him throughout and uh, finally he, sort of gives in and makes peace with you and allows you to take him. Did, did Twyla explain any of this as she was going along or was it really just the steps and it was um, in, inside of her, she knew where she was heading? I mean, she, she didn't go heavily into like story detail. I remember at one point she did talk to us about like the three fates and how they had the string and they were like, pulling along this you know they i forget what the story was it's like based off of that greek mythology yeah i think of hercules where they like yeah. string, string and then they yeah. string, you know yeah. kind of, and yeah. she was telling us like that's what you guys are but it was like a very brief moment she didn't like go into heavy detail about story she just wanted us to know that like we're this force and he's you know we're trying to get him <laughs> <laughs> right. Kind of playfully, we're not, you know, like. Well, I guess one time we try to be spooky with him, and then other times we try to, like, you know, get, hey, it's not so bad. Come along, you know, kind yeah. of thing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It had a positive it had a positive vibe to it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, how about the the lift? So when you finally take him, there's the whole. <laughs> oh yeah. The slow <laughs> mo. So how That's did a that? Whole story on its own. Happen? I think she wanted it to be like so, you know, like even yeah. more than we were able to do. And she would come and be like, somebody get out of here. Let me go in. And she would yep. lift. <laughs> she would us. Just, she pushed us all out of the way. She was like, get out of here. <laughs> she would just lift James. <laughs> we would like, do oh. all the weight, like all yeah. the heavy lifting. I was so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really fun day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very hands on. I mean, it turned out it's really beautiful because again, it's not like a big, flashy lift. It's very slow motion, and all of a sudden he's there, and you're then all of a sudden we don't see anymore. He's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely one of those days where she like pushed us. I was like, okay, we are lifting this man on stage, and. Yeah. We are strong women. <laughs> yeah. yes. You guys also did like a lot of choreography too, leading up to all of that. Like it was nonstop yeah. dancing for you guys too. So <laughs> yeah, a lot of really big jumps and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she called us her her big girls. She just wanted us to always be like jumping and kicking and fl flailing our legs everywhere. She just we were the, the big girls. <laughs> I forgot Long legs. We called us the big girls. I yeah. remember being like slight, moderately offended. I was like, the big girl. <laughs> so Angelica, you were part of the sort of community. This is set um, sort of 1940s New Orleans. Of course, it's the music of Alan Toussaint, who mm -hmm. was a real jazz and R&B le legend. And so you were one of the were crossover couples. Is crossover that, couples, yeah. yeah. Sort of a name that she, I think that she brought <laughs> from uh, in the upper room. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I mean, originally when it was choreographed, we didn't really know what was going on because um, mm -hmm. originally it was me and my partner, Stephen Locke, 
and then Jonna Francisconis and um, Andrew Barty. Mm. And so we were just like experimenting in the studios where like all of a sudden um, Twyla would ask me to pee back on Steven or just like do really crazy lifts. And then she kind of put all of that choreography together when we were all in the studio. And then we kind of realized that we just kept on like crossing over to the other side every single time. She was like, oh, you okay. guys are the crossover couples. And we never left, like we never really left the stage. We'd always leave and then come back and then leave and then come back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was like, that was very hard. Like Elle said, we were so eager when we were young and we just kept on going and going and um, doing so many runs of that was just, <laughs> crazy you guys were doing crazy stuff like I always loved watching yeah. crossover couples because you guys were doing all kinds of like it's just so inventive it's stuff you I don't think anyone's ever been asked to do on stage no I the no thing about onto the stage gliding I mean, split across yeah. the stage yes yeah, <laughs> or jumping awesome. onto the man's shoulder in a split yeah <laughs> wow like yeah. that well, she really yeah. liked, I mean, she wanted constant activity. I mean, it was mm -hmm. like this sort of bustling, really alive um, community. Because I guess then that juxtaposed with James as the father, who was a little more still. I mean, he was kind of on the run from you guys. But yeah. uh, I think it, was, yeah, it created this contrast. And she did have sort of multiple stories going on at one time. Yeah, She did explain that too, like for our characters, I mean, as individuals we were like um just around having a good time all hanging out especially during the scene of um, mardi gras and it's really cool that she incorporated the three faiths with us too like they all of a sudden did a quick change and they were dancing with us which was pretty awesome <laughs> i mean a lot's going on but <laughs> yeah. i was thinking about that quick change i mean all of a sudden boom you're part of the community and then then you and then do you did you, do you go back to being the fates or do you stay then? We bow as the fates, but we're not technically in the last number. Yeah. Because I think it's kind of a resolution and we don't, we didn't need to be involved anymore. Yeah. I think at right. one point in time we were involved, but she just didn't like it. And I remember her taking yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. She kept trying to get us to like be on the train at the end with James, but it, it was like too heavy for them already with one person on it. And she just, yeah, she just scrapped us. <laughs> she was like, you guys can bow as the fates, it's fine. <laughs> you served your purpose in the story, I guess. Yeah. And it's a quick change back for the bow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Into your sweaty costume. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome, right? Yeah. So one thing I really loved, and I remember being really struck by it at the time, was, the, and as you said, the interest that Twyla took in the really young, women in the company i thought that was i thought you know as someone watching it that that was just wonderful and i think you were really inspiring to her and uh i wonder what you what more you might have to say about that it just seemed really special it's such an honor i mean i, I think she she watched class in new york when we went on tour and i think that that's when she did uh you know her casting and i think you know it was the first time we had gone on tour to New York, at least the first time I had gone. Um, and just excited to be there. And I think she maybe caught on to that energy and was like, oh, maybe we could do something with these people. I don't know. I don't know what went behind mm -hmm. the scenes, but um, it was just such an honor. I mean, being in the room, you know, there were the principals all in there as well. And mm -hmm. we were young and in the core and it's very cool. Yeah. yeah. I, and I I thought it was really cool too. Peter kind of made a big point to tell the three of us and I'll, mo I mean, most of every, everybody in the piece, but he, he definitely made a point to tell us golden girls that Twyla like really wanted us and like had hand picked us and was really excited to work with us. And it yeah. really was such an honor. I was just like, Whoa, Twyla Tharp, like really, she picked me. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was just a huge honor to, work with her in that fashion yeah. yeah totally I agree and like also too um she really loved how open we were to like trying new things and um letting ourselves learn that stuff too and um I think that was just all around that vibe was such a huge inspiration and we all fed off of that too which was really cool 
um, especially if people are like starting to upcome into the company and starting different kind of works. I thought that was really nice to see as well. And she brought that out in all of us. So mm -hmm. I'm sure she did appreciate it because her whole career seems built on just uh, a fusion of a lot of dance styles. Mm -hmm. uh, think of the years, the 80s and the, at ABT and dances like Upper Room and Brief Fling where some people are on point and other people are in character shoes or they're in tennis <laughs> shoes. She, she mm -hmm. just really likes bringing together all kinds of dance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know her dancers too, people who dance in her company came from all different backgrounds too. She had, she had I, I know one of her dancers left New York City Ballet to dance with her. Mm -hmm. You know, she just has all these different, you know, she attracts people because people want to work with her and collaborate with her. It's, a, it's this amazing collaboration. That's yeah. how she works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I think you... she has a challenge that's inspiring as well. You know, mm -hmm. like she, she wanted to work with young people and working with young people, you know, can be a risk sometimes because you don't know if you're going to be, a, you know, like, it's exciting because you can get a lot out of them, but they're also newer on stage. And so you're kind of, you know, it's a, a leap of faith and we're yeah. lucky she took that on us, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you each have a favorite moment you could single out in waiting at the station that's memorable or that you look forward to, or maybe you're glad when it's over or? <laughs> <laughs> I have a favorite. <laughs> um, she started doing this in the studio like up the last few days before we premiered and we were running this ballet like uh, three times a day and she when she had a personal note for you she wrote it down on a piece of paper and she ripped it off and she like threw it in your face. <laughs> and was like this is your note and keep that and that was one of my favorite things ever <laughs> funny I remember that too mm -hmm. I mean like, like all of the rehearsals oh sorry all the rehearsals and stuff I remember where she would just like we did have we worked so hard and we did it so many times because like she would take us to the other studios sometimes and just be like um okay, now try this, now try that, now try this. And you, she can tell when we got tired. And then she showed her like softer side, which is kind of sweet too, where she was like, oh, Angie, it's okay. Never mind. <laughs> like, I didn't really like it anyway. Let's just scratch that out. And Aww. like stuff like that was really sweet. And I, I felt like I got to know Twyla in that sense too, which is, it was cool to see both ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I was going for a favorite part of the the ballet and like I was thinking of my favorite steps and I also remember doing them so many times in the studio. I think we were in Studio E, so we were in the back, and it was maybe the only piece that I was involved in. And so we spent a lot of time with her. And I think she didn't always have like you would go to different rehearsals if you were free. Like I remember we would go to core rehearsals, we would go to crossover couple rehearsals. Like if you had free time, you were in a studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we worked. It was just the Golden Girls, and we were doing this one where we we jump up, we roll down to the floor, we do a ponche, we come back up, we do one step, we do a soda shot off, and it's like one she's step. not exaggerating. <laughs> That's exactly what we do. <laughs> and for that part's over, I'm like, okay, we're gonna be fine. <laughs> you feel like you're stumbling. You're like, am I going to fall? <laughs> but I think she would if you did. <laughs> Yeah. We had budgeted, I think, time-wise, about six weeks for the process, but she had really gotten through the piece in three weeks. So then it was, so there was a lot of time of kind of tweaking and running. I mean, I know that it's an exhausting period of time. It means that the ballet is going to be really ready, but at the same time, it's a lot of repetition as uh, you're leading up to the opening night. I'm, sh I'm assuming that by the time you got to opening night, you felt very confident in what you were doing. Oh, yeah. I mean, too, we also had to adapt to the sets. Like, we, working in the studios, I mean, she kind of sort of explained going through the wings from behind, because she kind of did it Broadway style, where there were um, backdrop and little slits opening where we can come in and come out as well. And, mm -hmm. like, we had to, since we were running 
back and forth, quick changes, everything has to be set along the side and you have to watch out for the train and you have to watch out for things that you're running into. And, you know, like that, that stuff too was like hard to get used to, but at least we got the stamina for the choreography and everything. That was fine. It was just getting used to all of that yeah. on top of it. Well, and now every time that we've brought the ballet back, like, I don't think any of us really need to have the steps talk to us. <laughs> we know this ballet like the back of our hands. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. The music goes on and then it's just like, do it. <laughs> yep. I, can, I can tell you the pole first sequence. Yep. I can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, this is... Um, it seems to me it's one of the maybe few ballets in the repertory where so many people have stayed in their original roles, um, even if they may have sort of moved around in, in the company or they're more senior now or because it just seems, like, seems as though the roles were so particular to you or it was such a mm -hmm. sort of special time that people just stayed in those roles, which I think really adds to the value of the performance every time that we bring this back. Yeah. Oh yeah, like sometimes she, or like I remember prepping too because we all had individual costumes and um, we were like, what do we do with our hair? What do we do with like the style of makeup or whatever? And she would just be like, oh, this would look good on you. Oh, Jonna, this would look good with you. Like wear a hat, wear this. And it definitely became mm -hmm. your part. And yeah, doing it now, every time we do it, it, it brings me back to when we first learned it and d did everything with her for it yeah kind of grew up with the ballet you know it's yeah. kind of every time it comes back I can remember parts that were even more challenging or be like oh I've really I've really grown in this way you kind of whenever you come back to any sort of role you kind of have those um realizations and so I feel like this is one of the same where we've really kind of you know where we've been and where we're going it's and it, that's kind of the theme of the ballet as well as like where you're going and so I don't know it's really been nice to see yeah mm -hmm. and I mean I I'd like to say that we're all still young so don't think <laughs> we're not young but we were really young when this <laughs> premiered and I think back on that and I'm like wow I mean maybe in a little bit of the reverse what else <laughs> some stuff is a little harder now <laughs> No, it goes both ways, for sure. I know. It's, My body's it, a little different now. I, I mean, when we did it, when was the last, we did it in Paris, right? Yeah, when yeah. we did it in Paris. Yeah. yeah, I was like, wow, that did not feel like that when I did it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then it's, and then it's like, oh, this really hard step was such a hard time for me. But like now it was like a lot easier. But then there were moments where I was like, oh, that's not as great as it was, or fresh <laughs> as it was the first time. <laughs> oh, I love hearing about how she took such care with, with everybody's look, too. You know, she was working with uh, Santo Loquasto, who, who is legendary in his own right and designed the scenery. Yeah, a lot of metal scenery <laughs> to watch out for. And the costume, <laughs> was he involved in those conversations with Twyla? Were you guys up, say, in the in costume shop doing that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, I think I went through different fabric um, samples before. I, I think um, Jonna and I were switching a lot because she was wondering which one would look best on us and which style of dress. Um, they had a lot of drawings and stuff for us too and different updos for each of us which is kind of cool to see side by side um but yeah they were very um involved in that and also asked us which was kind of cool they were like did you like this and i was like kind of but not really <laughs> but then they'll like kind of make it into something that you would enjoy wearing on stage yeah a lot with mark sapone is what i remember he was like yeah crafting the yep. um, Golden Girls. And maybe, you know, he talked with the designer and then, yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah. we do have very intricate designs. They have different personalities. Yeah, they're, all yeah, they're very individual. It was super yeah. cool to see up close. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think once they've been, they've been displayed in the, in the hall, in Macaw Hall before in the front, so people can see, yeah, they're all, they're all different. I mean, they make a great effect all together, but each one's very individual and the hats and the vest. And, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know that some of the stuff wasn't, 
wasn't all handmade. I know, I think all the dresses were made, but then some of the uh, accessories for guys maybe came from um, like Goodwill or places where they went out and found some little pieces here and there to- Yeah, some along. vintage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hats and all, so. Yeah. There are a lot of pieces in this ballet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah we were you know supposed to be taking this on the road pretty soon and we're not able to but you know we're able to 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 show one of these archival performances and it's it's from that very first season so we're oh, gonna see you guys sort oh, of wow. with twyla <laughs> and alan toussaint is playing and oh uh, that's great i don't know how much interaction you had with him i know watching him from the front as part of the picture because you could see him he was on a platform I mean it was really it was really cool I can tell you the effect I don't think I've ever seen this ballet from the front yeah I've neither <laughs> we're always in it yeah um do you guys remember it was the same year we premiered the ballet Alan Toussaint also performed I think at um the mm -hmm. pink door yeah and then what's the other one downtown by Cafe Ladro yeah I don't so the remember. Triple door. The triple door. Triple door, triple door yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 He performed there. Did you, did any of you guys go see him? I went I and saw him. I think so. I yeah. think I didn't. Oh, okay. neat. Yeah. It was I cool. think I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did play some of the songs from the piece as well, which was really uh, cool. That's um, yeah, awesome. Some yeah. of them have, uh, you know, some of them have words and can be sung mm -hmm. and uh, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I remember like, Sarah Pash would sing them. I didn't necessarily yeah. know the songs to, or the words to the songs, but Sarah mother knew. In -law, mother in law, mother in law. I've grown to know them since because of Sarah. <laughs> I really like the music. I love that combination of the jazz combo and then they're backed by the orchestra. It's very glam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good time. Yeah. Well, I love hearing about all your. Uh, your great memories working with Twyla. I just think it, it seems like a really special time in the company. Peter had been acquiring her ballets since, you know, the first one was, I think, 2006 was Nine Sinatra songs. So we had really developed a whole relationship with her for those years. And she had already made two works for us, uh, Afternoon Ball and Opus 111. And so Station was really the kind of culmination, I think, of this whole relationship. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Isn't she our artist? in residence or something yeah while she was making it was during <laughs> this time yeah and i think it was um that program it had sinatra and then it had did free it also fling. have free fling first time with the live yeah. music yeah so, oh yeah wow that was yeah. a very hard rep <laughs> yes twyla, right yeah air twyla yeah yeah air twyla yeah. Yeah. an artist in residence artist in <laughs> Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in Waiting at the Station. We hope to see you before too long live in Waiting at <laughs> the Station and on stage too. So uh, yeah. thank you again. Everyone take care. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Thanks, Doug.